Rivers are the arteries of the deserts in western North America, riparian corridors that countless species use to traverse the inhospitable terrain. Many species of birds migrate up and down these rivers, and sometimes some unusual species show up, like a vagrant Canada warbler I saw several years ago. It's a yellow bird. A yellow belly. Gray top. just has a white rump, not rump, bright white patch on the cloaca. Many birds also breed in these tamarisk thickets, and inspecting them closely can yield a multitude of species. One of the best ways to see them is to float down the river and inspect every mile of the river on a grand adventure, combining either rafting or kayaking, or in my case paddleboarding, with birding. Let's begin our birding trip. Well, welcome to Birding the Colorado. Uh, today, we're going to go on a little expedition down the Colorado River near Moab, Utah to get what we can bird-wise. So our stretch will be from the oak uh, Grove Campground all the way to Moab, essentially. And we're going to see what we can see. We can hear lots of birds, so that's good. They all hide in the tamarisk and it makes them very hard to spot. So there is just great diversity of birds inside these, uh, all this tamarisk woodland. It's all invasive. Tamarisk is from the Middle East. So, you can see vehicles and stuff all the way along this road, or this river, they've built a road. So, if extreme adventure rafting isn't your, uh, or whitewater paddleboarding isn't your forte. You can drive this road and get a lot of birds. So 
saw a bird fly through large and dark. Uh, could have been a cat bird, but I'm not sure. Through the whirlpool. Oh boy. We have three New Zealand jet boats. I'm gonna get down. They're gonna create waves that are gonna really rattle us. There they come. Oh, they're stopping. But yeah, I guess these were invented in New Zealand and they have come here and they run the Colorado, the lower stretches of the Colorado. That sounds like uh, some sort of warbler. I'm really bad with bird calls, but that is literally what this is. This is birding by ear, plain and simple. Oh, that was a chat. It was upriver, so we passed them. They are uh, truly cool birds and make like full range of noises and they do that parachuting flight where they, they fly around and yell and flap their wings in this exaggerated manner and the tail goes straight down. It's, uh, it's cool to see. generally bird using uh, general shape and impression. That is one of the tricks I've learned and over time it's more of a acquired uh, knowledge of just certain groups of birds accidentally. Right? Warblers or leaf gleaners. A lot of them are leaf gleaners. And so they're kind of flitting around in the brush, in, in, in thick brush moving constantly. You know, it's a warbler and then once you get enough of the composition of the color, you can figure out what species. Uh, sparrows are kind of hovering around in the ground and occasionally they'll pop up. We unfortunately don't really have um, any real sparrows we're going to see because they hang mostly in the desert. Uh, there's black-throated sparrows out here. Another species found in more desert-like habitats is the blue-gray gnatcatcher, though some pairs also do live in the tamarisk. Uh, the toys are sparrows, I think. They're kind of in the, in the sparrows, so we did hear one of those, so... But yeah, they're generally down in the brush, and then you need field marks to identify a lot of sparrows, because they don't... A lot of times, if you only get a fleeting glance, they're kind of hard to tell apart. They're a good bird to get binoculars on or know the call of. Uh, then you got some uh, other birds that are fairly easy to identify, like the Orioles when they're flying over, they have all this bright orange on them if they're male. Females are kind of subtle, so they're a little difficult to tell, but they make a lot of noise. They sort of a rattling call, and they have their own song you occasionally hear. Uh, Flycatchers are another good group. They're all Generally, uh, they perch and they'll fly out doing a behavior called hawking, where they'll fly out and they'll grab an insect and then they'll come back. And most species do that, uh, but, you know, kind of size is an important detail, being able to tell the difference in size between, say, something like a, like a western kingbird and a hash-throated flycatcher are good. And then, of course, you have a whole different groups of smaller flycatchers on that. You've got western wood peewees, 
And you have to tell those apart from empids, which which is okay enough. But, uh, the western uh, the western wood peewee has a vest, but uh, empids are really hard to tell apart. And even in the hand, uh, they are difficult to do. So have fun with empids. I can't give you any real hints, except I. From what I've read, uh, greys like to shake their tails around. They like to wag their tails. And so that's generally how I tell a grey from anything else. But their calls are different, so that's the main way in the field. But if you just see them, they're kind of difficult to tell apart. Another bird to keep both an eye out for and listen for is the beautiful lazuli bunting. I think I hear a gross beak, a black-headed gross beak. It's this big orange bird, and bl orange and black bird. It's, it's like the Halloween bird. It's like one way of describing it. Um, it makes a call that sounds fairly robin-esque. a swallow. It's like a violet green. There's a canyon wren up there somewhere, but where? Uh, this is good because, uh, oh, cowbird up there. They're so awesome, uh, the brown-headed cowbirds. They're uh, nest parasites. They make that, they make a really neat sound. Yeah, it's really bizarre. But I was, uh, I was shown this uh, this paper, or a figure from a paper where it was uh, an, a strategy against uh, cowbirds, and it was like I think it was a yellow warbler, but they built the nest. When a cowbird came and laid uh, the egg in its cup nest, the uh, yellow warblers would just build another nest on top of it, and you know that because it's easier, to, because I guess it's easier to. Uh, just produce more eggs than, uh, than to deal with that, but they just kept on building the nest up and there's apparently some that were several nests deep of, 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 of cowbird uh, parasitized nests. Oh, we got something flying. It is a Says Phoebe, black tail, uh, or dark tail, kind of gray, brown wings, and that sort of rusty uh, underbelly. And it just hawked and grabbed something. I love today's Phoebes. They're like one of my favorite flycatchers. Oh, we've got some abandoned cliff swallow nests way up there. They build them out of uh, mud. They collect it off the, the banks. That, that's pretty cool. Got more uh, nests there of the cliff, sw cliff swallows. They're colonial, unlike uh, barn swallows, which well, are kind of opportunistic. They're kind of nest in the same area, but they can also nest alone. It's loud. Let's see how close we can get. It might be an empid. Yeah, it's just sort of an olive gray mass. It's like a dark head. It might actually be a black Phoebe. I... Yeah, with the twitching tail, that's a black Phoebe. Oh, Raven. Just saw the shadow fly over. Those are our really big bird. Oh, and there goes our uh, black Phoebe. There is a raven nest up on the sandstone cliff, kind of that alcove. I can see the chicks. 
can hear them. And there goes the adult. Yeah, we're just past Grand Staff Canyon. All of this is it's so high that there's no beach. There's usually beach, and that's where uh, great blue herons and Canada geese are off uh, just sort of sitting around. We don't see any right now. So like a fly catcher in there. Oh! Uh, spotted sandpiper, I believe. Yeah. Just flew out. Yeah, so we got... That's a nice shorebird. They're, uh... They're fairly common. Oh! Great blue heron! There it is! Flying over the island. And... Those are turkey vulture. Two great blue herons. Like, 20... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 turkey vultures. All flying in the same direction. Oh, the heron perched? Oh, yeah. We'll uh, put down our voice as we're approaching the heron. Oh, and a chat just... Oh, well, that's a... I just heard a chat. That looks like a western kingbird. There he goes. I just heard... Uh, some white-throated swift somewhere up here. If they have little tiny, their feet have like basically reduced down to nothing. They just kind of cling on to the sides of things. <laughs> um, uh, really cool. Yeah, I hear them. I see some. They're really high up there, just uh, flying up and down this cliff face, making their uh, calls. Okay, we have... A uh, chat, I believe, somewhere around here. Yeah, it's a chat. It's going off. We'll come past it any second now. Where is it? Somewhere in these thickets, right here. Ah, hummingbird. Yeah, hummingbirds are cool. Uh, if you're really lucky, they'll do their little display dance, which where the they'll do a big uh, the uh, the. Hummingbirds will do these big U's in the sky as a display. They're calling in there. Oop, dragonfly. Flying up and down. And there is Moab. Right there. We're going to go under a bridge. What's that? Blue grosbeak, blue grosbeak. They're bright blue, reddish wings. They're an awesome bird. Yes, I think that concludes it. I think uh, that is the last bird uh, we haven't seen yet. That's like a super specialty. It's these sort of riparian corridors, but I think we did fairly good today. So thank you for watching this awesome adventure.
Brooklyn Bridge production, Crossing Moab Bridge. <laughs>